is about how PIX is revolutionizing financial inclusion in Brazil is Elena Tuj and Patrick Hai. Um, they are co-founders of Cult, which is a community-centered platform for cultural content curation, and they're also ILF grantees. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you everyone to be here today. As, as she said, I'm Elena, and this is Patrick. And we have been ILF grantees since 2021. So currently we're in the phase, between phase one and phase two of the financial services. And we're aiming to build a digital wallet that connects Interledger protocol to PIX, which is a revolutionary instant payment system that is changing socioeconomic situation in Brazil. And that is what we are here to talk about today, how PIX is revolutionizing financial inclusion. So. I'm going to show you a bit of the main properties of PIX in Brazil, in, of the system and payment method and some numbers and also the systemic effects in Brazil. So starting from the beginning, what exactly is PIX? As I mentioned, it is an instant payment system that in only three years of existence since November 2020 has become the most used payment method in Brazil, so we can say it's an effective real-time payments platform that was created by the Brazilian Central Bank and what it does is it allows for seamless and interoperable transactions through activation of PIX keys, which are personal uh, information such as your ID number or your phone number or your email. So it's very simple for you to connect it to your situation. And also another way to, to make transfers through PIX is using dynamic QR codes that will be currently updated with new information. And this is very important as well because you can even transfer money without having a bank account using PIX through this QR code. So it's very revolutionary for not only for Brazil, but for other contexts as well. So these are some of the main properties of the PIX system that we can think in a broader view of how it can be implemented in other kinds of systems, okay? So first of all, it is government driven, very important. So the Brazilian central bank is providing the entire infrastructure for PIX and it is operating the whole system. It is always available 20, uh, 365 days per year, 24 seven. And it has an instant settlement and clearing of up to 10 seconds. So if in 10 seconds, the transaction fails, the money is safely returned to the payer's account and then the payer can try to do the transaction again. Uh, so this system is reliable and secure. You have the, the central bank as the original source of truth and you, you, can, you can track the transaction through notifications for end users like us and also for payment service providers that are implementing PIX in their, in their platforms. So it is also, you, you, it has ubiquity. So basically PIX is everywhere in Brazil. Up to 90% of the Brazilian accounts nowadays have a, a PIX key activated. And if you are a payment service provider and you have more than 500,000 users in Brazil, it is obligated, mandatory for you to integrate PIX into your platform. So this was very important for the scalable mass adoption. And another property that also helped a lot was the standardized and accessible UX UI. So by having a minimum user experience standard and also brand guidelines, PIX was able to implement a very easy to use and familiar interface, which helps with mass adoption as well to make it more popular and more accessible. It is cost effective, so it's free of charge for peer-to-peer -peer transfers. And if you're a business, you have reduced fees. And also if you are a, a payment service provider, it's free of charge for you to send payments using PIX. And finally, it has flexibility, evolvability, and extensibility, which means that the, the central bank offers this basic protocol and infrastructure that is very robust, very sophisticated, and safe. And then on top of that, it is open through open APIs, open protocols, open standards for other projects to innovate on top of that. So it really opens up a world of possibilities for new payment solutions, new applications, and other kinds of experimentations. So in Brazil, this is really important because we have a very heated up uh, fintech environment. So we can see a lot of digital banks also uh, use, sorry, using PIX uh, in their strategies. And this is really improving the entire social economic situation in Brazil. And I'm going to explain how by showing you some main numbers of PIX in Brazil. 
in only three year, in only three years of existence, we have 153 million unique active users, being 92% of them individuals. And just to remember, uh, Brazil has 210 million uh, people, okay, population. So 11 trillion BRL, which is the Brazilian currency, was the amount transferred in 2022, only in 2022, with 24 billion transactions made on an average ticket of 500 BRL, which is approximately $100. And 35% of Brazil's transactions are made with PIX nowadays, being 56% of them peer-to-peer. -peer. So in terms of growth, it was very impressive, the, the growth that PIX had only during the first year. 45 million Brazilians made their first online bank transfer in 2020. In terms of financial inclusion, that is massive. And 5 billion BRL was the amount businesses saved, estimated amount, businesses saved in card fees. And 1.5 billion BRL, how much individuals saved in bank fees, which is also massive for financial inclusion in the country. And recently, we had a new record in October 6, 2023, uh, with 168 million transactions made with PIX during one day only. So the numbers show for themselves how crazy PIX is as a revolution in Brazil. Everyone uses PIX in Brazil. We are Brazilians living in Portugal, but we are Brazilians and we, we know how crazy it is. And now I'm going to pass it on to Patrick to talk more about how the systemic effects of PICS in Brazil. Thanks, Yanena. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So there is an inter interesting fun fact in Brazil that a uh, few years ago when the Facebook group went down, so all the communication from Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram were offline for a few hours in Brazil. And uh, so pretty much all the communication we use there. So during this time, people were sending pics to each other with messages, because when you send the pics, you can also put a message in the, with the money. And you can send even one cent of BRL. And so after that, people started to flirt using pics. And it was crazy, like it became, this episode became pics Tinder, it was really famous. So sending a payment in Brazil is even easier than flirting for many people, <laughs> uh, which is incredible. So, uh, to understand the revolution that PIX caused, we have first to show you how it was before. So, uh, you had a lot of uh, transfer costs. Uh, the time frames were restricted, so you had to send the money between Monday and Friday, and only during the work hours from the banks, which are usually between 9 and 3 p.m. Uh, the transfer took a long time to, to be sent, to, to be received for the other person. Uh, the UX, UI were really complex, so you, in the websites at the time, uh, or in the apps, it was uh, really difficult to send money and really expensive. And if you wanted to skip all that, uh, if you didn't want to spend money with the transfers, you had to go to the bank. Uh, the quills were crazy, like one, two hours in sending in the quill just to make one transfer. And uh, it was uh, much more successful, uh, successful. Uh, it was prone to fraud, meaning that uh, it was much easier for the malicious people to uh, steal someone's money with all of these problems. After peaks, now with this instant and free transfer, you have hi high liquidity rates, meaning that uh, for low-income population and small businesses, this is really important because they need the money uh, as soon as possible. Uh, they have to eat and they have to pay the bills. They cannot wait uh, days or weeks, uh, sometimes one month to receive the money from the, uh, the provider of the, the payment. And now uh, that everyone is adopting PICS in Brazil, uh, it benefits a lot these groups. And also in Brazil, 40% of people are informal workers. And if you go to Brazil, you're going to see everyone in the, that works selling water in the, the beach and people with small uh, shops or bars. Uh, all of them accept PICS and they also give discounts for people who pay with PICS because it's much easier for them. They don't have so many costs and uh, they receive the money uh, right away. Because of that, Brazil advanced 14 positions in the global ranking of financial inclusion. Uh, this is this year index, and it went from 35th to 21st. And before peaks, the number of the, the amount of the population who had access to bank account was 57%. Now it's 82%. It has to do a lot of the, with peaks and also the digital banks and wallets uh, uh, democratization in Brazil. 
So the next steps of peaks are, uh, I think there are two here that are really important. One is the international peaks. Uh, like Bruna said today earlier in her panel, they are now uh, starting to talk with neighbors like Colombia and other countries in South America to make cross-border payments uh, instantly and free for people. Uh, but it's really, uh, they are only starting this. It's not something that is possible uh, now to do. But I think the most important is the peaks withdraw because uh, they released this new feature recently. And now with this, uh, you can withdraw the money you receive that you have in your account in any pharmacy or small store close to your house. And you have to understand that Brazil is huge, so there are a lot of cities that you don't have banks. And for these people to go to the pharmacy or to the store that they already go uh, every day, uh, and to withdraw the money without the need of a bank account. And it's really simple, we don't have any cost, so it's amazing. And this is one of the things that is uh, changing completely the life of people in Brazil. So the main learnings from PIGS here, and I think Interledger uh, can use a lot of these learnings also. Uh, first of all is the eventual consistency model that uh, is paramount to PIGS success because this provides high availability uh, to the system. So, like Elena said, you have only 10 seconds to finish this transfer, and more than 90% of the cases, the transfer is made, but if, the, let's say, your, if your internet goes down during these 10 seconds, they cancel the transfer, you have to do it, it again. But for all of the other cases, it's always available. PIX is never down in three years. There is no uh, case uh, where, uh, where PIX was offline. So standardized UX and UI to, was key to mass adoption. Uh, also in Brazil, more than 200 million, and PIX is used by the young people and the old people, also from uh, low-income population and rich people, uh, people from the big cities and small cities. So uh, you have to understand that the UX here and the UI are really, really important so that people can access this technology. And, uh, of course, the low-income population benefits the most, as well as small businesses. Like I said, now, uh, these people, uh, usually informal people, like in Brazil, a lot of uh, informal workers, and small business, they have uh, high liquidity rate, so it's instant payment without fees, so it changed uh, their lives. But on the other hand, there are potential threats like social engineering and frauds. The system of PIGS itself is very safe. Uh, there is no case of uh, fraud in the system itself. But malicious people are trying to find ways to make frauds. And the Central Bank of Brazil is already working on that. Like the, one of the features that they are now working on is something that you can cancel the, the transfer and get back the money if they realize that this was uh, a fraudulent operation. So uh, at the end of the day, what uh, the purpose here is to show you that peaks in only three years and uh, reaching only, let's say, 200 million people is already causing a big revolution. Uh, so we would like to leave you with this thought, which is imagine what Interledger could do worldwide uh, if we can make this uh, a reality for uh, people all over the world. Thank you very much for, for coming.